you watch Tucker Carson, if you watch cable news, you're, you're not going to know, you're not going to really understand what's happening to people in the streets right now when it comes to housing, when it comes to food, when it comes to like all these kind of issues that people are facing because of COVID-19. Like, we know we know how much the billionaires are making. Um, so we actually pull up a report, if Phil can put this up, it's actually an organization that's actually tracking how it's affecting children, you know, families when it comes to hardships of COVID-19, when it comes to food, housing, and employment. Um, and the numbers are really startling. Um, you have like almost 12.1% of all adults in the country reported that they didn't have enough food in the last seven days. This is report updated as of September 11th. Um, so that's about 29 million people just reported that they didn't have food the last seven days. Um, that's a lot of people in this country. So 12.1%. Um, um, as food, uh, you can go to everything to rent. Um, it's a large share of the pop one in five renters are behind on rent. Um, th this is huge right here. Children. So like when, when you say also, they, yeah, there's another stat. Yeah. Jeff Bezos could make as much as $13 billion By in when? a single day. In a single day. In a single day. 24 hours. All these people are hungry. And remember, a lot of people saying, oh, but look at all these people. They're so lazy. They're sitting up. We're talking about people who are collecting unemployment. That means these people were employed. They were not mm -hmm. sitting up on welfare. They were gainfully employed. The economy collapsed. And... Wow, how how the thing is that when the economy goes down, everybody should go down. How do the richest of the rich go up? Yeah, that's looting. So I, I know everybody was like, you know, you, I don't agree with looting. We're still in the Gucci bag. Jeff Bezos is looting because what is the definition of looting, Messiah? Yeah. The definition of looting is profiting off of a tragedy. Yeah, the COVID nineteen pandemic is a tragedy and jeff bezos is profiting off of it he is a looter of the highest order yeah we we had unemployment rates in a single month this time travel almost 70 years to 1930 this is that is unprecedented dive on unemployment rate that happened we almost had you know 8.4 percent unemployment rate i mean that's huge. I mean, like, I've heard stats about like when it came to like the French Revolution, the percentage of the population it took for people to get pissed and start chopping heads off. Um, I, I think we, I think the United States kind of passed that percentage already, like you know, like three, four years ago. So we're like we're already past kind of the French Revolution tipping point of a population being mad enough to do stuff. So it's like, what is happening now when it comes to seeing these kind of numbers day to day? Um, so I mean, I feel, I feel like. This kind of this kind of website that's doing this kind of work is crucial. I mean, it's kind of tough to look at, but it's crucial to to keep this data intact, um, to know these numbers. Because when Biden gets becomes president, and all of a sudden people are going to forget these stats. All of a sudden people can think these stats magically disappeared when Biden becomes president. You know, these stats are still going to be here, and they might even going to be worse in the next four months. So, um, if Phil can play this clip, the next clip. We're just like, this is a story of like millions of stories. Oh yeah, Amazon was price gouging. They would, hunt, I heard like a thousand times amount of price gouging. Like, what is that? That is looting. That's <laughs> that's looting, like you said. That is standing on the roof of your shotgun. Stand on the roof of your store with a shotgun and making people buy your toilet paper for like hundred dollars. To live so. in their SUV. Well, I call it the perfect storm of being behind on bills, mm -hmm. losing a job, and then the pandemic hits. Channel 2's Keith Garvin live in Northwest Harris County now with their story tonight. Keith. Dominique, Chris, we're in a Walmart parking lot in Northwest Harris County, and most of us come to a place like this to buy food, medicine, maybe even clothing. But a woman and her 16-year-old son have been coming here for the better part of the past seven months, simply trying to survive. You happy dog, Bobby? It's been seven months on the streets, and uh, we're kind of really tired, really tired and exhausted. Maria Baez is a Houston area mother desperately trying to hold it together for her son, herself, and their two dogs. 
hold it together in the face of losing her job during the pandemic and having to live for the past seven months in their SUV, seeking free meals, gas money, and other help from strangers. Maria's 16 year old son recently started online learning, logging on the great daft get said there's an update the to the day. story. Oh, thank, oh, I think guys are. Please son. share that with us, please. It's kind of a punishment. It's kind of a punishment for anybody living like this. After suffering health problems, falling behind on rent, and getting evicted in February, Maria says she lost her job cleaning houses. Then the COVID crisis hit. It was difficult for me to find a job. On my desperation, I started selling food. It was really difficult because it's really difficult to be cooking all the food, preparing everything, then go to sell on the streets. What's been especially difficult is not being able to part with their dogs, Sugar and Bobby. Homeless shelters won't allow them, and animal shelters say Maria would have to surrender the dogs permanently. Letting them loose on their own for her just isn't an option. How could we go and get the roof and get the bed and get the uh, food and uh, just thinking, where is Bobby? Where is, where is Sugar? With food, health, safety and shelter becoming greater issues by the day, Maria Baez is looking for a quiet, healthy and safe place to turn for her son, herself and their two dogs. It's like I'm trapped. I'm trapped. I don't know what to do. And Maria Baez says what would help her the most and allow her to get a chance to get back on her feet is if she could find a place to temporary, temporarily shelter her dogs. And that way she could then look for and try to keep a permanent job to then find a permanent place for her, her son, and those pets. Reporting live from North West Harris County, Keith Garvin, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Like, I, I appreciate them uh, reporting on stuff like this, but I, I can't help but feel irritation. I can't, I can't help but feel irritation when you see wealthy media, members of the media. So, yeah, so Walmart. And, it's, yeah, uh, Karen said it's crazy that they live in a Walmart parking lot because the owner of Walmart makes $55 billion in April. They made 55 Well. She was homeless in that parking lot. The owner made fifty-five billion dollars. <laughs> so this is. But you know, this is one yeah. of the things that that really bothers me. Like, you know, like those commercials with Susan Sarandon singing sad songs, and you yeah. know, the kids are hungry Feeding and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, and it's like you got a motherfucking camera in your hands. You know that you're doing better. How about you stop sticking a camera in their fucking face and help them? So yeah. I can't. So it makes it makes me a little it makes me a little irritated that this like guy that's probably making you know two or three hundred thousand dollars a month can't help you know like you standing right there and you're holding a microphone and a camera in her face and she's telling you like how much she's suffering like yes yeah. like air it but like you know yeah. don't wait for other people to do stuff like yeah I have a couple of things one it feels like it felt like like one of those commercials in Robocop or like Starship Troopers, so surreal dystopian commercials. Like he's reporting from the parking lot in front of her, you know, where she's sleeping in her van. It's like so surreal. Like, you know, you're going to pack up and leave and let her keep sleeping in the van. Like it's surreal. And another thing, I, I always felt that when it comes to anthropology, like the history of like humanoids, like human species, like when they, like they, they noticed things when they found like humans were taking care of each other when they found like humans were like healing each other's bones and stuff like that that's when they saw like humans were evolving when they were taking care of each other healing each other's rooms taking care of each other's health that the fact that we have a woman just like sleeping in the streets because of her health um how advanced of society are we we're not advanced advanced is more of a cold word of being white you know it's not about being advanced of like we have advanced technology helping each other we're not advanced doing anything like that you know, so I, I wanted to pull up, Phil can pull up that article again, that article real quick to show you the numbers. So, like, that story was in Texas. So, um, if Phil can pull up that article, I'm going to show you the, the numbers, the rental numbers, the crazy numbers in Texas to show you how how crazy it is in Texas. So why this lady can be in the parking lot right now. Phil can drop the article real quick again and scroll down to the... um. the COVID article. So pretty much like the 
I wish I, I can't really see it. I printed it out, but I can't really see it. So pretty much there's a, the percentage of like renters in Texas is almost 24% of renters in Texas could not afford their rent. And that was collect that was data that was collected like in, in July. Um, if you scroll down all the way down, it pretty much shows you all the percentages by state of how many people percentage of the population in each state can't afford their rent. And Texas has like the largest, one of the largest numbers next to like um, New York, which is like 27%. So this shows you this percentage of like adults for children who can't feed, feed their kids right now. Um, this is huge numbers. Um, Look at New York in the millions. Yeah. Almost 2 million. So we scroll down even more and get to the rent. Where we just saw the story. That's like food stamps, like people are applying for food for food assistance way more now. Um, which the stimulus is supposed to be supporting. Um, food pantries are running out of food on a daily basis. Um, so these are huge stats. These is like hundreds of thousands, millions of people. So this is behind rent. So just want to say. So this is like, it pretty much says one fifth of renters are behind on rent. This is like, this should be like something reported every day. Like this is like a huge problem. This is a disaster waiting to happen. Um, and this doesn't even account for people who are about to be behind on rent because they're basically living on credit. They're living on the goodwill of other people. You know, this doesn't this doesn't even tell the whole story. You know, there are people who may not currently be behind on their rent. But, you know, they're, you know, they're, they've gone through the last of their savings because, you know, yep. they say that, you know, even the most responsible families should have about six months rent saved up. Well, guess what? It's now month seven, month eight of the lockdown. So, you know, it's, it's easy to look at the people who are, who are, are reporting this stuff now. But I think that the numbers are going to end up getting worse in the next uh, two to three months. Yeah, yeah. Especially as we get into the winter, it gets colder. You know what? We could reopen the country if people wore a goddamn mask and stop, uh, and stop intentionally trying to spread the virus, and, so this, and denying science and denying yeah. this, this. And you know, I support from. Trump. That you know, like we we could we could we reopen the country if people weren't so goddamn selfish. If we had a proper lockdown, we we kind of we would have a soft reopening right about now. We could have had that right now. The reopening yes. would have happened four months ago. Yeah. So this stat right here, which people don't talk about, because we talk about renters, you just think of this like Joe six pack in like his trailer. We think of renters, but people don't realize when you think of renters, you think of kids. So when you when you kicking somebody out, like in that story we just saw, we just saw her, her and her kid were kicked out. So. So we see those millions of people we have to also include the children, which is a mental effect who can't. This is like rent and food. This is horrible numbers right now. Look at these numbers for behind rent and or can they get enough food per state. This is the United States, supposed to be the most advanced country in the world. One of the richest companies, uh, countries in the world, if not the richest com country in the world. Yeah. And this is the stats that we see for children. This is how we treat people who can't get jobs, who can't do anything. We treat the most vulnerable this way. Um, so this is something to look at. And then as, we blame them. We, yeah. we blame the victims for their own hardship when they're just working hard and trying to do their part in the economy to yeah. add value to society. Yeah. So go back to what Swaffer was saying to close this out. It's like if people just wear their masks, properly show their dents, Get the shit out of your fingernails, wash your hands for 20 seconds, you know, and we can get this show on the road and hopefully get a vaccine in a year or so, a year and a half or so, and actually get back to normal someday. But we refuse to believe the science, you know, mm -hmm. so this is where we at. <laughs>